Long time no see. Good morning, I'm Councilman Chaim Deit, Chair of the Committee on Veterans. Thank you all for joining us today. I would like to thank the members of the Armed Forces who protect our way of living and all of the freedoms that we are afforded. Uh, I would also like to thank the veterans and military f members who have supported the military community and our country. At today's hearing, we'll be discussing VetConnect NYC, a program operated by the New York City Department of Veterans Services. A common issue we see among the veteran community is a lack of knowledge about as well as access to services and providers. In response to this deficit, DBS created the VetConnect NYC program to ensure that veteran needs are matched with service, services and providers. VetConnect NYC began as a pilot program in 2015 called NY Services NYC. New York Serves was created uh, to find an effective, accessible model for streamlining the complex process of navigating all the available resources for veterans in New York City. In November of 2018, DVS officially acquired the former NY Serves and launched VetConnect NYC in its place. VetConnect NYC is a referral-based platform for veterans to search for and be connected with the services that are available for them here in New York City. The platform is run by DVS in partnership with Syracuse, a university, university institute for veterans and military families, America Serves, Unite US, and Northwell Health. VetConnect NYC has connections with hosts of over 80 providers of services, including provi providers like American Red Cross, CUNY, Four Block, The Bridge, and Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. These providers offer a range of services, including legal assistance, healthcare, employment, housing, and many other services. The providers are available on VetConnect's website and VetConnect positions itself as a referral program to connect veterans to those providers. Although VetConnect NYC has been in existence only one year since its official launch, the framework that this platform is built on and has been active since 2015 under its former name, NY Serves NYC. We look forward to learning more about VetConnect NYC today, including how it's being run, uh, how the referral service portion works, and what, difference, what differences exist between NY Serves and the current VetConnect program. I would like to thank our committee staff, Nuzat Sadri, our counsel, Kevin Katowski, our policy analyst, and Andrew Wilbur, our finance analyst, and my new citywide veterans director, Mr. Joe Bello, for their help in putting together uh, this hearing. So I want to congratulate Joe Bello once again uh, for being on the New York City Council's team and uh, serving as the citywide veterans director. So I will let everyone give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> So at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, the members who are here is uh, Councilmember Alika Ampri Samuel and uh, Councilmember Paul Vallone. And uh, I'd like to ask now the council um, to administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Good morning, Chair Deitch and members of the Committee on Veterans. My name is Adam Connolly, and I am proud to serve as the Assistant Commissioner for Engagement and Community Services at the New York City Department of Veterans Services. I am joined today by Alexis Wachowski, Associate Commissioner for Public Affairs at DVS. On behalf of Commissioner Lori Sutton and DVS, we would like to extend our appreciation to the Committee on Veterans for their advocacy and leadership in the veterans community in New York City. DVS's engagement and community service members have been proud to greet members of the City Council, including Chair Deitch, at our Veterans Resource Centers throughout the city and hope they will have additional opportunities to introduce members of the Council to our local veterans at the Veteran Resource Centers and other events in the future. About VetConnect NYC, I would like to now address the subject of this hearing, the Coordinated Care Network, VetConnect NYC. VetConnect NYC is a one-stop shop for New York City service members, veterans, and their families to connect to a range of free, vetted, quality services 
and only those services for which they are deemed eligible. It's what we in the military community like to call a force multiplier. With a single phone call or by filling out a brief intake form, VetConnect NYC links service members, veterans, and their families to a network of over, of over 100 service providers capable of addressing the range of life needs. VetConnect NYC is a partnership with the City of New York who procured the Network and Syracuse University's Institute for Veterans and Military Families, IVMF, who coordinates the subcontractors, of which there are two. Unite Us, a veteran-owned tech company who operates the digital platform, and Northwell Health, who serve as the coordination center providing trained veteran peer specialists who work one-on-one -on -one with constituents. How it works. In a moment, we will present a demonstration of how a person could submit an assistance request to VetConnect NYC. I'll also provide a brief summary of the process discuss how VetConnect NYC has performed since we launched in November 2018, and provide some key metrics that reveal insights about the complexity of needs New York City service members, veterans, and their families have met through this program. Signing up for VetConnect NYC is simple and straightforward. You can call 1-833-VETS-NYC. You can go to the website www.vetconnectnyc.org from a computer or mobile phone, or you can speak with one of DVS's outreach coordinators who will assist you in signing up. After filling out a few basic demographic questions, you'll receive a phone call from a coordinated care manager within three to five business days. For urgent mental health needs, VetConnect NYC also promptly displays the phone number for the Veterans Crisis Line. All the care managers are also veterans working at our coordinated care provider. Northwell Health, one of the largest health care providers in the Northeast. The care managers will ask questions designed to pinpoint what kinds of services you're eligible for, as well as what needs you have. As the data will show, most callers have more than one need. If you're seeking housing, you may also need help finding a job and be interested in speaking with a mentor, for example. The care manager then inputs relevant details from the conversation into an advanced technology platform operated by the veteran-owned tech business, Unite Us. This technology platform, visible only to Northwell Health and the target service providers, allows the care managers to track which service providers the caller is eligible for, make the referral electronically, track when the service provider successfully connects the caller to services, and confirm when the case is conclusively resolved. If the case is not successfully resolved with the first pro service provider referral, Northwell Health's care managers can then conduct follow-up calls and emails with the client until an appropriate service provider is matched with the case. If a constituent needs a service that is not available within the vetted provider network of VetConnect NYC, Northwell Health's care managers can also make a referral to an out-of-network organization. The vetting process to become a member of the network includes consideration of several areas such as need for services within the network, mission, vision, and service of the provider, staff capacity, and willingness to adhere to the referral model, the service provider's finance and budgeting, accreditations, references from other providers, and a demonstrated focus on data, measurement, and commitment to improvement. In sum, the service providers within the VetConnect NYC network go through a thorough vetting process. The main benefit of VetConnect NYC is, of course, what it provides for service members, veterans, and family members. It's very easy to connect to VetConnect NYC and very difficult to fall through the cracks. Once in the system, VetConnect NYC's care managers can continue to track a case until it is resolved. In cases where a service needed is provided by a city agency, Northwell Health's care managers can refer the case to DVS. DVS's outreach coordinator, coordinators then serve as the service provider, making the warm handoff to a contact at the most appropriate city agency. At this time, I will demonstrate how to submit an assistance request for VetConnect NYC.
Uh, we're just waiting for um, for a court to come in. So I'm going to ask you some questions in the meantime, and then as soon as we're ready, we'll uh, Sounds good. begin. Um, so uh, how many clients' uh, requests have been handled by VetConnect NYC in 2019? Currently, it's 916 requests. 916. How does that compare to the, to the previous years? This was the first year that this program rolled out, sir. So on that's what we have here today. Under the previous um, survey, you have a, um, a count of how many? Oh, under NY serves? Yeah. I, I would get that information for you, sir, at a later time. OK. And what's, uh, what do you estimate the number is going to be in 2020 if uh, this year is 916 based on um, uh, the outreach that's being done and the success, as you mentioned, of VetConnect. What do you anticipate and estimate for 2020? Certainly an increase year to date, sir. Um, our target goal right now is to increase the request month to date going into the next year of the contract. We do have a coordinated outreach um, program that we're currently working on setting up. Uh, as far as social media and other avenues of, of that is concerned. Um, so typically, how many, how many requests, like if you had 916 in 2019, um, how many requests uh, come in per year per client? Currently, it's, a, it's an average of two to three requests per client, sir. So two to three. So 916 would uh, represent how many people? Total unique clients right now is 483. 483. OK. Um, how many veterans are there in New York City? 210,000, approximately. Um, so out of 210,000 veterans, uh, you serve 483 clients. So. Let's go back and tell me again how, um, what is the plan exactly, exactly through social media? Um, because obviously, uh, from the 210,000 veterans, not everyone has social media. Uh, matter of fact, this morning, I, um, on the way into City Hall, um, I was in the five train and I sat next to, I was fortunate to sit next to a veteran. And he doesn't have, you know, Twitter, he doesn't have um, um, all, types, all kinds of social media. So a veteran, uh, who doesn't have the social media, what, how are you planning to reach out to them? Hi, so I can uh, take this question. We have, in the year to date, in addition to social media, made sure we had materials about that Connect NYC at all of our community outreach events. Our community coordinators attended um, upwards of 240 events in the last year. So there's always this face-to-face -face opportunity to learn about that Connect NYC and what it can offer. But now that we are moving into the second year of the program, we are planning a large scale outreach campaign that will include both digital outreach on social media as well as print and local community newspapers. So that's something that we're hoping to roll out um, in the next few months. Um, you didn't, so up until now, you don't have any digital uh, outreach? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to imply that we didn't have any digital outreach. Yeah. We routinely post about social, uh, Vet Connect NYC on social media. We've launched a podcast in the last uh, year in which we discuss it as well. Um, it's that I wanted to express that we have in-person outreach that describes Vet Connect NYC in addition to our social media efforts. So if you, um, you attended 240 events in 2019 and you had digital outreach and you had a podcast uh, with all three of these types of um, social media and outreach, um, you still have 483 clients out of 210,000 veterans. So is there anything additional to this that you're planning to do? Do you have like um, contacts for the 210,000 veterans? We have expanded our outreach network recently with um, an increased distribution list, both for digital mailing and physical mailing. So that will be part of the outreach campaign as well. So is that something that you have not done, not done until now? We have not done that kind of uh, mass mailing at this, at this time. Uh, why is that? When we acquired the network, there's, um, as we will describe in the rest of the testimony, a number of partners that we're working with, who you will also hear from today. We wanted to ensure that when we transitioned from New York Serves to VetConnect NYC, that all of the partners were working um, 
uh, well together, that everything was working in the system um, before we launched a major outreach campaign. So in some ways, this was sort of our pilot year to make sure that the system was working appropriately. And we're really pleased to see how it's progressed. And now we feel confident that we can launch a, a large scale outreach campaign. Okay, so you are doing, so this is in addition to everything else that we just mentioned. Yes. So you're gonna have a mailing and what else is there gonna be? There's also going to be ads in community and local newspapers. Um, we're also going to work with reaching out to the veteran service organizations so that they can spread the word through their networks. Uh, many veteran service organizations are, have already done so, um, talking about Vet Connect NYC in their weekly or monthly newsletters, but we will continue to do that outreach. So when do you tend on sending out um, uh, the mailers to, to all 210,000? So, veterans? well, we don't have mailing addresses for all 210,000 veterans. How many do you veterans. have? We have approximately, um, I'd have to get that number to you, sir. I don't have it off the top of my head. I think we can. I want to hold you to it. Okay. <laughs> um, we have mailing addresses currently for approximately 75,000 veterans in New York City, but this doesn't account for the amplifying effect that we will have when we work with the veteran service organizations like the VFW, the American Legion, et cetera. So we're hoping that by partnering with them to, to conduct this outreach campaign, we'll be able to reach a large portion of the veterans in New York City. How many years has DBS been in, uh, in existence? Three years, sir. Three years. So during the three years, um, uh, you mentioned that you wanted to make sure that uh, NYE uh, the Vet Connect is working properly, and the advocates are all on the same page, and well, so, um, so I understand that, but um, how come like we don't have the contacts and working with advocates up until now to get um, the information of the, all the 210,000 veterans? Well, we don't ask our advocacy organizations for their mailing list. That's their private information that they've collected on their own. Um, what we ask is for them to help us amplify the message about our programs and initiatives th to their mailing lists. So we don't know necessarily, for instance, how many folks are on the mailing lists of the VSOs. We just know how much DVS has access to directly. So is there any way uh, that DVS on its own could get access? We're continuing to explore avenues for increasing the amount of people that we can reach. Absolutely. How do you tend to do that? Well, through a combination of, through digital media and also through um, mailing addresses, we're continuing to explore what uh, lists are available that we might be able to acquire. Um, and we are also looking at um, working with vendors who specialize in doing digital marketing and print outreach to help us figure out the most effective way to expand our outreach campaign. So why, why, does, why does this take three years to, to, to start doing all this? Well, for the first year of our agency, we were really just kind of getting set up and staffing. When I started working for DVS, I think there were four or five people on staff and um, about as many computers. So we had some work to do to get established. Um, and then we've also started working on first the most pressing needs that the agency had, which was addressing veteran homelessness. So that was the first really big campaign that DVS focused on. Um, and then over the years, we've brought on additional staff, have been able to become a fully independent standalone agency, and are now able to do more outreach campaigns. Um, do you believe that veterans know veterans? Absolutely, sir. So the, um, so the 75,000 veterans that um, you currently have, have um, information on, did you do outreach to them, asking them to bring other veterans on board? We have not yet done a mailing to the veterans that we have on the list. This is something that we recently were able to assemble, and, um, but it's something that we have planned to do in the next few months leading up to Veterans Day and immediately following Veterans Day. Okay. So uh, the next hearing, so you would have, um, th those numbers would go up. 75,000? We would imagine so, yes. Imagine so. And is, um, can you also give me the, those numbers, the exact numbers? You gave yes, me an sir. estimate of 75,000. If you can Absolutely. The exact numbers. Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to listen to the presentation, but I just want to say on a, po on a very positive note that um, um, I went on the, the VetConnect server and as well as some of my constituents, um, and we also used the, the hotline 
and uh, they were actually very success successful in um, having someone reaching out to them and offering the services. So it was like um, someone called or went on Bed Connect during the evening, and then by next morning they got responded to. So that is that is truly I was extremely impressed, and we all were. So I want to thank um, I want to thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, I love to, uh, before we begin, I just want to um, recognize uh, Councilmember Alan Maisel, who has joined us. So, sir, at this time, I'll continue with the live demonstration. And just forgive me if I keep turning around. I don't have a lot of slack on this corridor here. So what you see here is the front-facing um, fillable form on the VetConnect NYC website. And it's displayed behind me as an example of what a client uh, would put into this form should they be should they navigate to this page or should they require an, a service request uh, you have the basic uh, demographic information required please note uh, the disclaimers uh, if that veteran or individual is in crisis uh, they're pointed to the correct avenue for which they could seek assistance if you if you would like I can go line by line but I was just going to submit the form and show you what the full process looks like. Uh, that's all right with you? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. At the bottom of the form, you're given the opportunity uh, to sign uh, to give your consent to be contacted. Bless you. Uh, please note that consent is hyperlinked and will provide the client with an informed consent for participation in informa information sharing form for reference or, or use if there is a verbal agreement or acknowledgement should you not have a, uh, a computer or a phone with you and we engage a client. Once you submit the form, the next screen will give you an option to export the form for your record and it'll just give you that. Uh, what I had just mentioned, and it just pre-fills out your, uh, your signature and your information. And at, this is the point that triggers that three to five day follow-up from the Coordination Center. Uh, displayed behind me is exactly what that form looks like for reference. Displayed on these slides is what the mobile interface looks like. It is a, just a condensed version of what's on the website with the same process and information required. This is a, an approved version of what the Unite Us platform looks like on the back end. Uh, so this is what the coordination center sees. Just keep in mind that this isn't a real client. It's just a mock client. And then the next slide, it's mock metrics. doesn't reflect what's actually in the system uh, just for privacy concerns. But each client has their own unique page with all of their information. And then you'll see next to that is actually the services based off of the area that they're in that are available, that are in the network that the coordinator can refer the client to. and the network analytics and data is displayed as such. And that concludes the demo. I'll continue my testimony if there are no questions on that, sir. Yeah, so um, is that, can you get on the DBS website from your computer? Sure thing. Great. So if someone um, goes on the DBS website, how can they find VetConnect? So this is the first, this is the homepage, right? Yes, there's okay. a slider on 
if you click, we had recently put up the podcast uh, image for the main page of the slider, but if you click through one, it goes right to the Connect NYC. So if but you click on, on the first one? On, if you click on the first window of the slider, it goes to Vet Connect NYC, and that takes you to the Vet Connect NYC website. There's also on the DVS homepage a, a menu option that says Get Help, right at the top of the page. Now my question is, if someone if someone's on the homepage, you're on the first page, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking for Vet Connect, or they don't, they're not sure what they're looking for. What would someone do? I would imagine they would go to the Get Help tab. Okay. At the top of the page. So you have the Get Help tab there? If you click that, it's, sorry, it's on the left, right under, nope, uh, to the right, it says Get Help. Sorry. Okay. And that takes to an information page about Vet Connect NYC. If you click on the image, it'll take you to the Vet Connect NYC website. Is there an easier way to do this? I'm just curious, like to have the Vet Connect um, so on the home page. For the first six months after the launch of Vet Connect NYC, it was the first slider uh, on the home page. It was the right. first thing you would see on the home page. And recently, when we launched our podcast, we moved it to the second slider. But it's something that we can always work to improve on how we get people um, make it clear on the home page that they can get to Vet Connect NYC. Like, what's the most crucial thing that someone would go on the DVS website? Is it the Vet Connect? Is that something that's mostly used? So we have um, some metrics on our website traffic that we can get to you um, that would explain how people navigate to the Vet Connect NYC website and the most popular uh, web pages that people go to our website for. So what is that? I, I don't have that in front of me, but I'd be happy to would get that. Would you say Vet you. Connect is, is like the top? I imagine that Vet Connect would be one of the, in the top category, but I would need to look at the data. So what else is on the menu besides uh, that Get Help page? So if you go back to the home page, if you scroll down just a little bit, there is a box where it says, I am looking for, and if you click on that, these categories are among the most frequently requested web pages based on our website analytics which is why we have them listed here. Well, I, I, can't, I can't see, what is this, what's that, the, Sorry, the first three the things? The first three things are meet the commissioner, meet our team, get help. So uh -huh. get help is the third um, most requested page on our yeah. website, so that's why it's listed third on the. So is there any way to, to have that get help like on the home page before you get in there, before meeting the commissioner? We can absolutely look at ways that we can increase traffic to the Vet Connect NYC page, absolutely. All right, because Vet Connect was amazing. Um, and the only question is sometimes to navigate to to get help, to, but you know, because when someone's looking for services, whether it's mental health or whatever the case is, homeless, you know, you want to give them that, that first easy access. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, VetConnect NYC is easy to access, easy to navigate, and with real people providing the coordination of care, easy to connect service members, veterans, and family members to the resources that they need. How VetConnect, VetConnect NYC performed. Since the launch of VetConnect NYC in November 2018 through the end of August 2019, the platform managed 916 service requests for 483 veterans and family members across 20 categories. The top three most frequent requested ones being housing and shelter at 23%, employment at 19%, and benefits navigation at 12%. The bulk of service requests, 48%, came in via the VetConnect NYC website. This is followed by phone calls and walk-ins at 42% and a smaller percentage being referred directly from the network providers themselves at 10%. The average number of days from the veteran or family member making initial contact to the Coordination Care Center to getting a referral to a service provider was five days. The average number of days from the first contacting VetConnect NYC to resolution of a case was 12 days. DVS is working with our partners at IVMF and Northwell Health to ensure that we are doing everything we can to be responsive to veterans and their families in the timeliest way possible and are consistently striving to improve our processes to be more streamlined, efficient, and swift. DVS is also committed to ensuring that the network of service providers meets the needs of our veterans and their families, and to that end, is working tirelessly to expand the network. To provide context on what this means, 
When DVS launched VetConnect NYC in November 2018, there were 80 vetted service providers in the network. As of July 2019, this number increased to 102 service providers. When the current onboarding process is completed, it will represent a 60% increase in the number of service providers in the network from launch to present. Next steps. To ensure we're reaching the widest possible audience of New York City service members, veterans, and their families, DVS is working in close partnership with the Mayor's Office of Operations to map out a large-scale outreach campaign using both social media posts, explainer videos, and print media, including ads in ethnic and community newspapers to be launched in the coming months. DVS also invites each and every city council member to link to, vet, to link Vet Connect NYC on their own websites, helping to ensure that your veteran and military family member constituents are aware of and have access to the free services that they have earned. DVS would also welcome the opportunity to work with your communications teams to develop appropriate language that meets the specific needs of your constituencies to both understand and gain access to Vet Connect NYC, and of course provide the Vet Connect NYC official logo for your websites. In conclusion, in partnership with IVMF, Northwell Health and Unite Us with VetConnect NYC, we've created the most comprehensive service network in New York City. Our sole purpose is helping service providers, veterans, survivors, and families find the resources they need to live fulfilling and purpose-driven lives. With the planned outreach campaign, we feel confident that we will expand our reach to thousands of additional veterans connected to families connected to programs, excuse me, and benefits that they have earned through their service to our country. We look forward to the continued partnership of the Council in advocating for veterans and their families in New York City. We thank you again for this opportunity to meet with you today. At this time, we would be happy to address your questions. Thank you. Um, so after, after uh, Vet Connect um, connects a, um, a client, a veteran, to one of the providers. Is there any follow-up um, from DVS? At this time, we're not conducting survey, any type of follow-up um, for them, uh, but that is planned in our contract amendment because that was cited as a need in terms of information. So, so we will have that for the, the next provider year. will get this information to VetConnect, right? I mean to DVS. Say that one more time, I'm sorry. So that provider would get the information to DVS and then you would have it logged in? Well, we would have to send the clients some sort of a survey that we've drafted uh, to, prov to actually see not only that they've been connected to services, but how that went and if they were really helped by it. Okay. Um, so I'd like to go to uh, my colleague, Council Member uh, Lee Campri Samuel, ask a few questions. Good morning, everyone. What's the most prevalent case? Because I, I, I see in your um, testimony you mentioned like housing and um, like just the percentages. Um, but can you break down between what comes in the office, what you see through the hotline, and what you receive via um, online as far as um, those actual numbers? Because so, like, is there more of a breakdown of folks coming in for help with housing, walking into versus those who are um, submitting a form via online. I do believe I have that information and I'll, I'll sift through here and grab that for you. Mm -hmm. um, just the general overarching metrics um, I'll say, Councilwoman, is the web form 47%, call and walk ins at 42%, and network provider referrals at 10%, just to provide some context. And just allow me a moment to look through here. Please feel free if you want to continue. And then um, I was also going to ask, um, can you just give us like a, a walkthrough of a typical day um, of the coordinators and their jobs? Because um, I see where there is a three to five um, business day lag or response time. And for me, that just seems a little long. Um, I know it's an improvement <laughs> from the other system. But um, you know, just can you just explain to us why it would take three to five business days in order for someone who is looking for services to be um, for there to be some level of response? For sure, and I would I would cite the volume that we aggregated. So uh, the total service requests being 916 from those 400 uh, plus clients, 
it's averaging about 22 uh, requests a day for the coordination center. Uh, I think if that was a priority request and the client needed emergency services, they have that option to express that and we would prioritize them for sure. Uh, but I think that that lag is just the typical caseload day to day for the coordination center. So I'm thinking like if it's not a um, like a crisis, but someone needs information right away, um, would that individual like could there be somebody that respond to them like right away as opposed I mean it's not an emergency but they would like some level of information like by the next day because they have a court hearing oh yeah for um, sure so Monday. in the speaking about the dynamic sense of requests that our clients have if our court if our DVS coordinators are engaging clients at a veterans resource center in the field and they have a pending uh, case like that we wouldn't refer that right away specifically to vet connect we would potentially refer uh, the other issues they may bring up in this hypothetical situation to them if it's not a, a needed priority And while you're looking for those numbers, um, you also mentioned in the testimony that um, the first process was doing outreach and like a campaign for homeless veterans. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about um, um, like some outcomes or what you saw and like just the level of work that you were able to do since that was the first mass? Sure, the uh, homelessness prevention and eviction, uh, the homelessness uh, support and ser services line of action, as we call it at DVS, is the most mature. Um, it's the first area that DVS really focused on as an agency, um, citing the fact that this was the most pressing need um, to address the homelessness crisis for among veterans. So I don't have the exact statistics on how many um, homeless veterans there were in 2016 as opposed to now, but there's been a steady decrease over the years. And we are at this point, according to our last point in time count in January, seeing that almost all of the homeless veterans that are still in New York City are in shelter. There are very few cases of street homeless veterans. Um, so we've made tremendous progress in that area. And um, I'm not sure if you had any other specific questions about the homelessness program, but I'd be happy to. You just made me think about something. Um, sure. When you say you don't have the numbers to compare, is it because you don't have it now? Or Yeah, I'd be happy to get those numbers to you. We do absolutely have those figures. I just don't have them in okay, front of Okay, because I was going to say, well, how do you know the decrease <laughs> if you don't have the numbers? To no, we do, we do have in those numbers, and I'll get them to you after the hearing. So, I, Councilwoman, I found the numbers you were looking for. So, by service request uh, for the entire program duration, we have our total requests there. Uh, unfortunately, this... The way that we pulled these metrics don't have exactly what percentage of those are walk-ins versus the web form. If you want to do some hasty math, and we could pull that for you, but you could uh, put that 47% of web services versus the 140 requests for employment, for example, just to have an idea. But I can um, that's a commitment I'll make that I can get you those specific volume requests. Okay, and the only reason why I'm asking that question is because um, when you say that you want to make sure that folks are not falling through the cracks, it's it's really good to get a sense of um, where people are accessing services and how and what those numbers are to really get a sense of the work that you're doing and um, to see what else can be done and, and maybe to beef up your outreach or mm -hmm. you know figure out a different way to do outreach. And I think it's critical to be able to focus on um, the way you track at this um, the, the beginning stages as opposed to um, you know three years from now realizing that we should have done something different. And I just think that it's helpful to have that now. You know, absolutely. And this is one of the reasons why we wanted to wait until we had some data before we did a large-scale outreach campaign to make sure yeah. that we were targeting print versus digital, for instance, appropriately based on the needs that we were seeing um, in the first nine months of the program. I will say, though, a great recommendation going into the next year of the contract of how we target our outreach, though, Councilwoman. So thank you for that. Okay. In the social media um, VetConnect, can you, is there any outreach or any campaigns on social media outside of just the NYC? Outside of NYC veterans? Yes. 
Uh, so we have NYC Veterans on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and so we routinely promote Vet Connect NYC as just a matter of course, um, and included in all of our monthly newsletters as well. Um, and we also have postcards that with Vet Connect NYC information to hand out at events. We've in fact brought a stack of postcards here that you can bring to your council offices if you wish. Um, and we've had two major events thus far where we've distributed mass quantities of these kinds of print materials. That would be when we launched Vet Connect NYC on Veterans Day last year and during Fleet Week. Northwell Health, our, one of our partners, um, sponsored a major event to cap off Fleet Week called Side by Side, um, in which we were, were t at um, Rockefeller Center for the entire day on Saturday um, during Fleet Week and distributed uh, a great deal of print material there. So we're trying to make sure that we combine both print and digital in our outreach efforts. Thank you. Uh, how many um, how many mental health uh, providers does Vet uh, um, Connect have? Thirteen, sir. So how does it work? So someone goes on VetConnect and requests for mental health um, resources. So how would that work between the 13 providers? So if, if it's not a, uh, an imminent threat, if the, if the client isn't yeah, suicidal visibly, um, so that process flow um, really, the, so the coordination center will receive that request. The request will uh, be pending review. That three to five days elapses the coordinator will then assess the client. Now, during their assessment of the client is when the coordinator and that back-end platform Unite Us will have all of those um, mental health serv health care service providers available to them. Uh, hopefully, if there's one close by to the uh, client's home or record, they would assign them there if it, meets, if it fits the bill. Uh, it really just depends on what the issue is and which provider best services the client. So how many, how many of the 13 are... Um, are on the Thrive NYC? I don't think we have that information at this time, but we could certainly look into um, getting you a more specific uh, response to that. I think the important thing to note is that there are um, the, the range of healthcare providers, uh, as uh, my colleague mentioned, matched according to geography to make sure that they're close by and easy to access, but also to make sure that they are eligible for those services. Um, so whatever the kind of mental health need that they have, th there's going to be some sort of referral made so that they can access those services. Uh, if a veteran should uh, contact 888-NYC um, well, would that bounce back to Vet Connect, or is... Um, Drive NYC going to deal with it? Okay. We would have to check on that and get back to you with that information. So, if, again, if someone contacts Drive NYC, right? Um, should they be receiving, it's a veteran contacting 888-NYC well, it's not an emergency. Um, would they get a response? They would get a response from DVS, and then if the outreach coordinators um, could help them get connected through Vet Connect NYC. So it would go back through? My understanding of the process is that if somebody was reaching out to 311 or NYC well, and said that they were a veteran, that DVS would be alerted to that, and that we could help them make the appropriate referral. But I'm not in charge of the program for the mental health initiative, so we would have to confirm that and get back to you with further detail. But they, they have uh, providers who work with DVS, right? The Vet Connect NYC platform? Yeah. Yes, 
they have providers that we also work with um, directly, but we are trying to make sure that we use the VetConnect NYC platform so the purposes of tracking the veterans' progress through the referrals so that they don't get lost in the process. So of the 13, um, you would say that half or more than half is not under Thrive NYC? Um, I can't really make that determination without checking uh, back at our looking more at the process. I think closely. we I think we spoke about this at one of the hearings. Is it possible for providers? I, I would have to check and get back that information Joe? to you. Joe, how many providers are part of uh, Thrive NYC? Do you know offhand? Eight. No, I'm saying for to Thrive. Uh, okay. We'll get you that information. Okay, great. Okay. Um, how does uh, DVS decide which veteran service organization is, is best uh, suited to address a veteran's needs? So when, during our targeted outreach, when we visit uh, VSOs, we assess their capabilities, uh, how we can help them. Um, if they are encouraged, they have the resources and, and willing to assist with um, projecting our services into the community. Uh, we encourage that and we'll assist them with that. If they need some help, we'll collect those issues that, and concerns that they have and get back to them in a timely fashion. So these providers um, need to reach out to DVS or does DVS also try to reach out to find new providers? So uh, at the coordinator level, as it relates to VSOs, uh, definitely a two-way conversation, sir. You know, when we're out in the field and we meet constituents, supporters, VSOs, uh, VetConnect NYC is always part of the conversation. And if an organization is interested in joining, um, I think about Operation Warrior Shield most recently. I had a conversation with Ed Schloman, just to pull an example, um, and he, his organization was interested in joining, uh, immediately connected in the same day. Uh, if someone expresses that they have heard about VetConnect NYC and they want to know more, we're always happy to share that information. But our objective is always to add um, the best providers to that network and really include anyone that wants to co commit and help out to the initiative. So who determines that in DVS? So anybody that's interested, we would connect them to um, the, uh, nor uh, excuse me, IVMF. And they have a vetting procedure where they will then engage the client um, and make that determination if they're eligible for the network. So I'm sorry, who does it go through? So um, we have anybody that uh, contacts DVS with an interest in joining VetConnect NYC, we connect to uh, IVMF, the Syracuse University Institute for Military and Veteran, Fam uh, Veteran and Military Families, and they have a vetting process that they uh, would put the organization through to make sure that they are able to take on the, the responsibilities of being part of the network. Do we know how many providers reached out um, to IBMF over the last three years and how many were actually accepted and how many were denied? We know, for instance, how many were um, brought on over, since we launched VetConnect NYC in November 2018. So we had 80 vetted service providers in the network then, and as we referred to in our testimony, we have 102 service providers now. We're also in the process of vetting or onboarding an additional 26 service providers. Um, so that's just from November of 2018 to August 2019. If we, if we reach back, um, we can dig out exactly um, the unique cases for each one of those providers, though and see the nature of their onboarding, whether they heard about us via a website visit and inquired uh, versus us soliciting their services. Is there a tab on the website for providers to join um, VetConnect? On the VetConnect NYC website? Yeah. Um, I would have to look more thoroughly through the website to get back to you with that information. And how about on the, on the, uh, the veterans? On DVS website, um, I believe there is. But I haven't looked at the content. Um, you have it here, the DVS website. Yes, I have it. Yeah, can we can pull it up. Yeah. yeah, sure thing. I do want to mention at this time, we're really happy that we have now added a digital outreach manager to our team at, the, at DVS, who is going to be doing a thorough assessment and audit of the website to see how we can improve 
um, and add more information to make it um, more accessible to our constituents. Who was that? Uh, it's Gil Feliciano, who's right here. It seems that we still have some work to do on the website to make sure that that's clear for service providers, how they can become part of the network. Great. All right. I appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Um, I think we'll, uh, we'll end this part. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, not too quick. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you can ask. Sorry. I don't want to bombard you with a bunch of questions. <laughs> um, the average age of individuals using the system, as well as male or female, and the breakdown of the borough, and like who's using the most? Oh yeah, for sure, ma'am. So um, the two age groups that have the most interaction with the system are the 25 to 34 and the 35 to 44. And then by borough, just bear with me for a moment. So from most to least, uh, Brooklyn at 29%, Queens 23, Manhattan 21, Bronx 17, Staten Island 2%, and undisclosed 8%. Can you go back to the age again? Sure. Percentage wise? I have a, uh, it's a, it's a bar chart. I don't okay. have the exact percentages. Um, but so from most to least, I'll go that way. Uh, it'll be 25 to 34 being the most, 35 to 44, 55 to 64, 45 to 54, 65 to 74, 18 to 24, and then 75 plus being the least. And with the bar chart, is it a significant portion of 25 to 34 or just the 25 to 44? in comparison to the um, older population. And I'm just asking that question, just looking at, you know, the um, war in Iraq and Afghanistan versus Vietnam and just trying to figure out. Like, yeah, looking at that, that war era, I'd say they, if I put all these together, uh, it's about half, half of those requests are the older generation veterans. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, if you could send uh, the commissioner my regards and I hope you all had a great summer. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I'd like to call up um, An uh, Antonio Silva, uh, Juan Serrano, Maureen Casey, and Mary Bayer. Thank you. We'll start clockwise. Good morning, Chairperson Deitch and members of the Committee on Veterans. My name is Mary Beer, and I'm the National Director of Military Initiatives at Unite Us. 
I'm also a military spouse. My husband is active duty Army. So I understand firsthand the challenges that veterans, our service members, and military families face. I work directly with all of our military connected networks, including Vet Connect NYC, and I support provider onboarding and engagement efforts, conduct software training for all users, and support the network data and reporting efforts managed by the IVMF. Unite Us is a veteran-led technology company that powers coordinated care networks of health and human service providers. In 2013, Unite Us was born after Dan Brillman, an Air Force Reserve pilot, and Taylor Justice, an Army veteran, reflected on their personal experiences transitioning out of the military. Both Dan and Taylor wanted to alleviate the problems that veterans and their families experienced during the shift back to civilian life. They witnessed firsthand the complexities of navigating health and social services because of a fragmented delivery system and its negative impact on people's health. Dan and Taylor worked with groups like the IVMF and DVS to expand this new model of care, which has now led to Unitas's expansion across the country to serve every person in need. Today, Unitas is committed to building a system in which every person in need has simplified access to the resources they are looking for, a truly interconnected system that starts in the community. We have become the leading social care coordination software that powers over 50 coordinated networks across 22 different states. This work, which started in New York City with our partners here today, has helped the entire health and human services industry adopt our innovative and proven model. The largest health systems, health plans, and governments across the country work with Unite Us as their trusted partners to integrate health and social services. Kaiser Permanente has chosen Unite Us to power the network serving their 12.4 million members. And CVS Health has chosen us to help some of Aetna's most vulnerable Medicaid and dual eligible members. The state of North Carolina has chosen Unite Us as their statewide infrastructure for the largest coordinated care network of its kind. We are proud that our solution has been validated by some of the leading government, healthcare, community, and philanthropic organizations in the country. We couldn't have gotten to this point with our initial success, without our initial success helping veterans and their families. Unite Us is the common technology platform that connects all of the service organizations together in VetConnect NYC. We empower health and human service providers to work together, integrating health and social care. With Unite Us, providers across sectors can send and receive secure referrals, track every person's total health journey, and report on tangible outcomes across a full range of services in a centralized, cohesive, and collaborative ecosystem. This social infrastructure helps communities transform their ability to track outcomes, improve health, and measure impact at scale. I'd like to thank the City of New York and the Department of Veteran Services, the IVMF, and Northwell Health for their contributions to this network and their commitment to improving health outcomes in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, do you think there's any um, improvement that needs to be done with uh, VetConnect? There are the things that we've talked about today about improving, or excuse me, expanding the providers in the network. I think that that's something we've all identified. I think increasing the way that um, clients can access care is another thing that's also been discussed. I would agree with both of those things as areas to improve. Uh, how would you feel um, is the best way to expand uh, expand uh, providers? One of the things that we haven't quite touched on yet is using the existing providers within the network as a recruitment source. So we have this list of providers that are currently active in the network. We know that they are likely sending traditional referrals to other folks in the community, other service providers, and it'd be great to dip into that pool too. Great, excellent, thank you. Thank you. Chairperson Deitch and members of the committee, my name is Maureen Casey and I'd like to begin by thanking you for your work on behalf of New York City's veterans and their families and more immediately for the opportunity to address you on the work that America Serves does in partnership with Unite Us, Northwell Health, the City's Department of Veteran Services in serving this population. I'm here today representing Syracuse University's Institute for Veterans and Military Families the only academic institute of its kind in the nation focused exclusively on the post-service lives of our veterans and military-connected families. 
Over the past decade, in addition to the research and policy analysis you might expect from an institute situated on a university campus, we have been building and delivering innovative and impactful programs to include entrepreneurship and other vocational training, as well as our coordinated service delivery work in communities. To date, the IVMF has assisted more than 125,000 service members and veterans across the globe as they transition out of uniform or pursue civilian careers, higher education, or community-based care and services. Our work in communities through the America Serves program began with an idea taken from our research. We discovered that out of all of the challenges the military-connected population faces, the majority reported that navigating the sea of programs, benefits, and services available to them was their greatest. From this, we saw that community providers could play a bigger role in serving this population. However, their true impact is only unlocked when organized into coordinated networks that stand ready to refer veterans across a broad continuum of providers willing and able to meet the many needs a veteran may be experiencing. Like with so many things, New York City led the way. The Robin Hood Foundation saw us as the ideal partner to improve service navigation and delivery in New York City particularly given our successful work with building networks to address veteran homelessness through the VA's SSVF program. Over the course of four short years, what started here in New York City has become a national movement that has brought us to 11 states. In that time, our networks have served more than 27,000 clients across the country, and we've gained critical insights that we can now bring back to our providers and clients in New York City and elsewhere. The IVMF is the only organization that works with numerous federal partners, engages state governments across the country, and provides direct communication and insight to providers on the ground. This is enabled by the way networks collect data, reflect on those data both locally and nationally, and adapt their strategies to meet the changing needs of the population they serve. For example, in New York City, clients of Vec Connect America Serves demonstrated considerable demand for providers who could offer legal services. Learning this, the network was able to react and add a significant number of new legal providers who were able to meet this demand. We are now armed with the information needed to constantly adapt and improve the way we serve those who have served in our nation's defense. Since the launch of Vent Connect, we've served almost 5,000 clients and processed more than 900 requests. If those numbers seem low to to you, perhaps consider the fact that we have been in this community for four years already, and in that time, your community providers have helped serve almost 4,000 clients and process over 6,000 requests. These successes are yours as well. And VetConnect, the city of New York, in, with VetConnect, the city of New York has institutionalized a program that meets a goal that should be a priority for all of us to better serve veterans and military families in our communities, and can be summed up in the words of a spouse whose husband sought services through America Serves. She said, not only does my husband have help, but for the first time in a very long time, he has hope. Thank you for this opportunity, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. So in your, in your opinion, um, how do you feel that Bet Connect can improve uh, I think that Vet Connect has been doing very well getting off the ground over the past um, nine months. I think it's important to remember that um, while America Serves existed prior to that time, uh, we were precluded from engaging with uh, the city DVS during that contractual negotiation period. And so since that time, I think that Northwell, together with DVS and the IVMF, has been doing very well. I concur with some of the um, recommendations to date around how we better uh, make informed consumers out of our veterans who live um, in New York City to ensure that they know that this network exists and they have this ability to essentially um, walk through a single door and get all of the services that they need. I think that we've been doing uh, a very good job in partnership with our colleagues here at the table with regard to provider engagement. There's always more that we can do in that regard. I think that we have taken a more measured approach. I think one thing that we've learned from our work and our experience is that you want to be able to serve a veteran when they ask. And the biggest risk is that if they come and they ask for a service and we're not able to provide it. So we've taken a measured approach in our growth, and I think that we've established a very good foundation and we're ready to move forward. Great. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. It's on. 
Good morning, Chairperson Daesh and committee members. Um, I am Juan Serrano. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Military and Veterinary Services for Northwell Health. I am being accompanied today by Anthony Silvera. He is the Supervisor of uh, Veterinary New York City. He oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the Coordination Center, and he's also a United States Air Force veteran, served 30 years. I, too, would like to thank you for your steadfast work and commitment to veterans. I myself am a veteran and can tell you firsthand the importance of having services like America Serves and Veconnect New York, City, New York City. These kind of services didn't exist when I returned home after medical discharge in 2009. I am a United States combat veteran, a uh, Marine, a native, native of Hollis, Queens. During my nine years in the military, I served with 2nd Battalion, 6th Marines, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, the Jungle Warfare Training Center, and Marine Corps Recruiting Station, New Jersey. In 2003, I suffered a neck injury in Iraq, so severe I couldn't continue my military career. Unfortunately, at the time, there was no vet connect New York City for me or for my family to reach out for help. The military is ingrating me. It is who I am as a person. My service has always been impacted uh, by my family and my friends who, by extension, also serve with me or by my side. As a result, I was determined to make in my career to help people facing the same issues I encountered. As Assistant Vice President of Northwell Health's Military and Veteran Liaison Services Division, we done yeoman's work to support active duty service members, veterans, and their families. We have a growing program that assists with all aspects of healthcare, career development, and more. Northwell is New York's largest private employer, and one of our signature programs for our veterans' employees is our pay differential program. This highly successful initiative was introduced in 2009 as another way to take care of our employees who are also currently serving and possibly inspire other staff members to answer the call to serve. Upon their return, all employees receive a differential check. This benefit makes up the difference between the military pay and salary for all Northwell employees currently serving in the, in the, in the reserves and then call into active duty. Since inception of this program, we pay over $1.7 million. Northwell Health strives to improve uh, the health and communities it serves. We are committed to the following, providing the highest quality of care, educating the current and future generation of healthcare professionals, searching for new ways in advance through groundbreaking biomedical research, promoting health, education, and caring for the entire community, regardless of the ability to pay. Northwell is exceptionally qualified to assist and support veterans. For over a decade, we probably stood side by side with the military community. Once we learned of the value and importance of Econnect New York City, we began to refine and cultivate an already strong relationship with these organizations, knowing that together we can make a difference. Michael Jordan famously said that talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. So we partnered with America Serves in 2016 to head operations for the New York Serves NYC, at the time, one of six America Serves coordination centers in the United States, is staffed by a supervisor to my left, a care coordinator, and an intake specialist, North, all Northwell employees. The role of the coordination center is to link service members, veterans, and their families to a network of over 100 community and national service providers. Northwell Health Solutions, the health systems care management organization that implements and stewards our base uh, care programs, our base value-based programs, has been running the coordination center operations, and my office has led the initiative in the community. We've also been working with America Serves to establish a secondary hub, New York Serves Long Island, that will support the more than 150,000 veterans who live in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Coordinating care and providing services for veterans is within Northwell's wheelhouse. It is what we do and we're privileged to carry out uh, this mission. Whether someone spends four years or four years in the armed forces, it is essential for them to get adequate, efficient resources that they deserve. And while plenty of veterans reintegrate easily, many struggle with setbacks associated with, transition, with the transition process. We're here to help and direct New York City's heroes to the right resources as efficiently as possible. We know there is much work that we can do, especially if we continue to work together. This partnership with VetConnect New York City has the promise to reach even more veterans and their families. On behalf of Northwell Health, I thank you for your continued support of VetConnect New York City. I look forward to your continued partnership in the future and will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Juan. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Sir, I'm I'm here if you have any specific questions. Oh, okay. Anthony is here. Again, as I stated in my uh, statement, um, Anthony Silvera, 
He is uh, the, the individual who oversees the day-to-day -day operations. He's the supervisor. He's the glue between uh, the city of New York providers and our market. So I have a question um, for all four of you. Uh, so if there are, if, if a veteran tries to access Vet Connect and they have issues or they uh, have ideas of how to improve Vet Connect, uh, who does he or she reach out to? Uh, number one, or is it is it possible to have a meeting with all the advocates, um, with the people who have experience, like as yourselves, to just come up with ideas and uh, and just speak about their experience uh, of that connect. I'm happy to start, sir. Uh, we're always willing to meet and to listen and to obtain feedback. I think that that has been one of the hallmarks of this process where, where we started four years ago with uh, America Serves, New York City, um, we've come a long way and Mary testified to that in terms of where Unite Us is now with respect to the greater healthcare network. So always available to take feedback. Um, we, the IVMF has someone that uh, is a market lead assigned here in New York City, so um, he too is always available. So happy to, to meet with any of the constituency groups or with any uh, individual veterans. Okay, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and to add to that, the, the table that you see here, the partners, Unite Us, IVMF, yeah. and Northwell, we all meet weekly to talk about network performance and opportunities like this on ways that we can improve. So we take feedback from clients, from partners in the network, and also software feedback. How is the software working for people that are actually using it? Excellent. All right. And as I mentioned, we are the largest private employer in New York State and also the largest provider healthcare in the region for veterans outside of the VA. We have a robust program, and everything that we do is uh, try to connect individuals with unique services and also take the feedback. That's how we learn. We can't continue to go on assuming that we know what the hopes, the needs, and the wants are for veterans. We have to ask. And we are doing a good job. We also uh, engage in quarterly meetings. We have report outs where we actually bring in uh, our service providers, and I think Tony can talk a little more to that. Um, yes, sir. So uh, we do have, you know, meetings monthly with the city, our city partners. Um, we also have ways that uh, veterans, if they want to contact us for information. So on our Vet Connect NYC website, where it says contact, if they have questions that they want to ask uh, directly about the process or to actually be a member of the network, that's the way that they can reach out because we will get emails then and we can reach back out to them. So. Right. So um, if, um, if we set up a meeting with uh, people sitting at the table with advocates, would that be fine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if you don't mind, if you could leave um, your contact information with Joe Bello, and I'd love to have like, a roundtable meeting with, um, with advocates and some veterans, just to have a, a nice conversation and see Great. what ideas they have or if they have any obstacles when they go on to Bed Connect. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you have a question? A quick question. You know, I always have a question. I'm a, yeah, my husband was, uh, you know, in the military. I was a military spouse, right, Thank for many years. Thank you for your service. My husband was um, he's an officer and was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, and my husband's a disabled vet now. Um, I remember when my husband came home the second time from Afghanistan, and we had a small child, and um, it was very difficult because I was not working. He had just come home, he was um, injured, and so he was not working, and we were just trying to navigate the system. So um, in a situation like that, when you have a, a you know, like a, a family or the child and um, both parents are not working and just trying to figure things out, um, how do you assist them? Just like a, like just quick. So uh, first, and we were like we were trying to figure out what um, <clears throat> it, it was. This running joke in the house: um, we wouldn't go outside because at the time we didn't have health insurance. Right, right, right. <laughs> so we just had a lot of vitamins and right. You know, so, we, it was so, so kind of difficult. Right. Yeah. So first, I want to thank you for your service as a spouse, also your husband's service. What branch was he in? Army. In the army. All right. I don't love against him. I'm an Air Force guy, but right. I want to thank you so Sorry. much for your service. Um, so first off, you know, the beautiful thing about VetConnect and this whole concept, right, is it's designed to be one-stop shopping, right, for one opportunity, whether you pick up the phone or you go to the VetConnect, VetConnect NYC website and you submit a request. Um, 
as the, the chairman said, that someone reached out to us and we're pretty responsive. We triage the requests, how they come in. So simply in your case, you know, we would hope that you'd reach out to us and then we'd have a conversation with you. We talk with you about what's going on. You know, part of the intake is designed to ask some basic information to kind of find out, you know, where you're at, kind of what's going on. And we have that conversation with you to determine what we have in the network and how we're able to assist you. So it starts with that simple conversation and that intake. And hopefully, I think we do a very good job of connecting with our veterans and family members that reach out to us. And it's all about that connection, right? It's all about um, being open enough and uh, being pleasant enough to have that conversation, to dig a little deeper about what's going on, and to show you the array of services that we have. So in a broad brush, that's, that's essentially what we do, right, I, is to peel back the onion and find out what their needs are. Because as you already found out, one request usually turns into two. Sometimes it could be three. And the most we've had is about five with one veteran. So did I answer your question? And I would like to add to that. Um, so we have been partners. We have um, been collaborating with the IBMF and the city for quite some time. Uh, and one of the issues um, that we faced was connectivity. Um, one of the main reasons as of why we knew that we had to be part of this is that our initial focus as an organization with military started back in 2006. Very early on, the main focus was on providing behavioral health care services. But we knew early on that in order to make it effective, we had to incorporate and make all those services available to the veteran, to the family as well. Uh, in, in a span of a, over a decade, uh, we grew to two clinical centers of excellence and all these resources. The one thing that we couldn't do was effectively connect those individuals who needed more than healthcare, addressing the socioeconomical determinants of health in those items that we are not good at, right? That we like to be better at, but we're not good at. So instead of recreating the wheel, uh, we wanted to partner with the top not for profits in the space so we can address that. Because in the way that we see it, you can have a great oncologist or gastroenterologist, but if you cannot follow your treatment plan and you don't have the supports around you, treatment is not effective. Uh, and the way that I see it, I sat basically where you sat in 2009, combat veteran, three tours. 2009, I was medically discharged three months. Uh, after I was discharged three months, Triker dropped me. I had no idea what I was going to do, right? So I felt I was le left to fence for myself. I believe that this coordinated network and this collective impact initiative is a breath of fresh air to those who are seeking care. And more often than not, Anthony can tell you that when you call from one thing, and just after five minutes of a conversation, you realize that the one need turns to two and three and four. So uh, for us, a value is important, but quality is the key. That should be the quality matrix, the quality, the outcome. Did we answer your question, ma'am? I have a question for Anthony. Um, so if someone, if, if, if a veteran goes on Vet, Con Vet Connect and um, requests assistance, would you be one of the people that return to respond to them? Yes, sir. Okay, so it was you when we did the, the, the test and you responded amazing. You were really, truly amazing. Um, so I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it was really Not amazing. Um, I just want to ask you, I have, we have two more panels uh, coming up. Um, will you be able to stick around just to listen to those two panels? It shouldn't take too long. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, Coco Culhane, Kent Isla. Uh, Joe Hunt. Coco Colhane, the founder and director of the Veteran Advocacy Project. Um, I was involved in the core original team in 2013 when this uh, was just an idea and um, wanted this more than anyone in the world, I think, because we have an entire staff member whose whole job 
is just doing referrals and doing the amazing work that um, Anthony and his team do every day. Um, but I'm shocked by this hearing so far because they just think this doesn't work. And I think we've had five years for providers to get involved. And I think one of the problems is something that a Robin Hood program officer said in the beginning, which is this relies on a sea of goodwill and there's no incentive. So we used this so, I mean, we were so enthusiastic about it. And my team all had to have accounts and they all had to use it. And we found out we were, you know, the number one provider referring in after we had decided our clients were not a good fit. And this was before I was with Northwell. This is not a criticism in any way on, it, it's, it's the system overall and the, and the environment that it's operating within in New York City. No one wants to use a middleman. And um, I've got to say, even DVS sends people to us outside of Vet Connect. Like, and I just think if we're spending over $1,000 on average per veteran on this system, we need to be talking about that. And we need to be talking about the outcomes and what's really going on and who's using the system and what they're using it for. Because I know, you know the biggest problem that we all face as you know, advocates and, and service providers is housing. So we sent someone in, and that's not what the, the system can't build affordable housing. It shouldn't be expected to. But we sent someone in, and they got referred to NYCHA, to the public housing wait list. And that's, that's not a good solution, right? And this may have been a couple years ago. This is, again, I want to say that the quality work that has come out of the people in the hub at Northwell is fantastic. And so this is not meant as any kind of comment on them. Um, and my intake staff has worked with them really closely. But I really think we need to be looking at this, what kind of requests are going in, what's the actual quality coming out, and what are we actually paying for? What are the tax dollars going towards? And why isn't this something that's integrated into DVS's services, right? I mean, I, I, again, to be brutally honest, like I'm calling Inez when I need to hook someone up with a service that I know the city can make happen. So if, if someone who has very adamantly believed that in the system and wanted it to work is up here telling you that, I, th I think you've got to also look at who's not in the room. All of the major providers who were there from the beginning and created this and don't use it, don't need it. And I'm happy, you know, if I'm wrong, then great. But 483 veterans, like, you know, we had, we served over 1,000 veterans in the same amount of time, and we're tiny, right? I don't want to serve, I mean, I want us to go out of business, but I just, I think that we need to really be looking at the data and questioning what we're using and how we're using the system. Thank you. Thank you, Coco. And I think um, you hit it on, you hit you know, on the nail. Um, it is important for DBS to get the numbers back to us, as well as um, the kind of services people are requesting and the results of that. And that's one of the things we discussed today. So hopefully we'll be able, we'll be able to get it uh, moving forward. Um, and I think it would also help to have that meeting um, with the, the right channels, United, United Us and everyone else just to be on the same page and to give those ideas uh, to them. So thank you very much, Coco. Uh, okay. Um, uh, good morning, Chairman Deutsch, and good morning to the honorable members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ken Eiler. I'm the project director at the City Bar Justice Center's Veterans Assistance Project. The City Bar Justice Center has been working with VetConnect NYC since inception back when it was still New York Serves. Uh, City Bar staff have been trained on the procedures for using VetConnect's technology platform, attended VetConnect town hall meetings, and regularly interact and correspond with VetConnect staff. To their credit, the team uh, at the VetConnect Coordination Center, um, as Coco was saying a moment ago, has been great at communicating with us, and veterans often speak highly of the team members when our staff calls to follow up on a referral that was sent. According to VetConnect's data, the City Bar has received 171 referrals, making us the seventh largest recipient of referrals in their system. We have noticed an increase in these referrals since their rebranding effort. Since their relaunch in November, the City Bar has received 73 referrals, virtually all of which were accurately referred. 
These referrals do turn into cases that we take on. Of the cases the City Bar accepted for representation this year, just under 40% started as referrals from VetConnect. However, to be clear, prior to New York Serves and VetConnect, the City Bar's Veterans Assistance Project never had difficulty finding and intaking low-income veterans who were desperately in need of our services. 2% of the country's 20 million veterans currently have an appeal pending with the Department of Veterans Affairs over denied VA benefits. Applying that same percentage to our city's veterans, and there's no reason not to, means there are approximately 4,000 New York City veterans who, at this very moment, have a pending VA appeal. At present staffing levels, the City Bar is able to take on a few dozen of these cases each year. Because of the tremendous need, it is vital the City closely scrutinize where its limited resources are spent and the efficacy of those resources. While it's impossible to put a price tag on the value of the referrals received by the veterans VetConnect has served, that's precisely the daunting task facing this committee and the city as it balances limited resources. At present, the ongoing annual cost uh, of referrals, um, the ticket price of VetConnect exceeds the budget by program area for either veterans employment or mental health in the FY 2020 DVS financial plan summary. Anecdotally, in my career, I have frequently heard veterans tell me quote, I need a lawyer, and I need a doctor, I need a job, or I need an apartment, but I have never not once heard a veteran tell me, quote, could you help me with a referral? What I really need is a referral. Our client population is typically stressed and looking for someone, anyone, to do the work at a time when service providers everywhere are simply maxed out. While the City Bar Justice Center appreciates the hard work the Coordination Center puts in, we also find that the VetConnect system occasionally makes the process unnecessarily onerous for veterans. It would appear the need to report higher number of veterans assisted incentivizes VetConnect to encourage veterans to remain within their platform, sometimes at the expense of practicality. For instance, if a veteran were to navigate to the VetConnect website, they could find the City Bar and see that we provide assistance with VA benefit matters. Then, if the veteran determined they could benefit from our services and clicked on our profile, instead of being directed to our contact information, they would be redirected to a portal encouraging them to contact VetConnect so that VetConnect can be the one to put them in touch with us, adding a layer to the process. Similarly, when it comes to over-the-phone referrals, VetConnect sends the veteran's information to the service provider but refrains from also providing the client the service provider's information. Providing both parties with each other's contact information would be the most practical way to ensure the veteran receives the information or resources they need. However, there is the appearance, at least to this provider, that there are incentives associated with keeping the veteran within VetConnect's tracking system to prevent this. We understand the interest in a single point of entry for purposes of tracking data, but we believe doing so should not add additional barriers to veterans accessing resources. We hope that there will be efforts to make VetConnect more efficient and less costly, and also that more attention will be paid to supporting the legal service providers who are crucial to helping those veterans denied benefits to appeal. Ultimately, we are all here to help New York's veterans. We at the City Bar Justice Center hope that in the future, veterans will be able to access those resources in the most efficient manner possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So um, you're, you're talking about expanding le legal service providers. So is this only f is this, um, for the pending uh, VA appeals? Or do you see that we need legal services in other areas too? Uh, I think, uh, Chairman Deutsch, there is uh, there is a there's a real need in both areas. But but where both uh, Ms. Colhane and myself work is specifically as veterans law practitioners, and you're basically talking to really the only game in town up here. Uh, when it comes to veteran-specific civil legal services. Um, and uh, we both believe that um, uh, greater resources put towards veteran-specific civil legal services is desperately needed, um, while also acknowledging that there are other legal issues that, such as problems with family law, housing, issues that are certainly not unique to being a veteran, uh, where veterans also uh, need assistance as well. Okay, so if someone um, if someone should reach out to VetConnect regarding um, legal help, you don't think that they is, they have sufficient uh, help for those veterans? I, I, we you want to talk about your wait list? Yeah, or, sure. I think I think the point is just. And I think this is a whole other hearing, right? <laughs> but that 
for we're, we're leading into the next hearing. <laughs> okay, the, for the specific services that you know Ken is talking about, because as if I'm not mistaken, the city bar is the only place for benefits for VA claims referrals. VSOs are not in it, as far as I know. Um, so I would imagine that his backlist, his wait list is quite long, and I know our uh, wait list for discharge upgrades, which is just one of the things we do, is quite long. So um, we work with that connect as best we can to temper expectations of, of veterans. So my question is, if you take your wait list and send them to Vet Connect, right? Let's say they're sitting, yes. sitting in your office and you go on Vet Connect and you, uh, you, you make a request for those services, what, what, what would happen then? They come to one of them. Yeah, I mean, they would probably cross-refer them to, to one, of, one of us. And what we do is when veterans say, hey, I need a, a lawyer, I think I need a lawyer to help me obtain VA benefits, mm -hmm. if they don't want to be placed on a wait list, we will then, at the City Bar Justice Center, we'll refer them out to uh, VSOs, veteran service organizations that provide those services. I see Northwell Health shaking their head, so I want to give them a chance to answer. Okay. Yeah, so let's go, yeah, let's get Northwell here. I don't, we Come on down. our experience. Yeah. So just as the referral process, right? So if a veteran reaches Vet Connect, as far as legal, right now we have five legal providers that are in the network. NY Lag is the newest one that just came in. Um, so there is a long wait list. Essentially, what we do is, you know, the veteran explains what their need is, because legal is one of the needs that we get a lot. We're pretty comfortable with what our providers are able to provide. <clears throat> so specifically, if it's for uh, service-connected disability, you know, we explain to them up front, you know, that there's a wait list. So we let them know exactly what they're going to be in store for if they still want to, for us to send a referral. If they were meeting directly with this veteran without coming to Vet Connect, um, and they're going for that particular need, then they're not going to necessarily refer them to us because they already went directly to this organization, if that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. But it makes sense what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense that a veteran should have to uh, be in a wait list and maybe not even being taken care of. Right. So I'm this this is why the, this is why it's important to have these conversations, right. um, just to see what the loopholes are, and this way we could sit down and see how to better, um, you know, service the veterans in the future. You want to say something, Coco? No, sorry. I was just going to say it's not Northwell's. Fault. I'm sorry. It's not Vet Connect's fault that we have wait lists. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of defending because. Oh, so right. do a good job. Yeah. So, so yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Does Vet Connect have a wait list? You just said. No, sir. It's no. talking about the wait list for them to be able right. to right. meet with an attorney to get assistance. Yeah. So there's right. a wait. There's so a wait you list. have a wait list. Does Vet Connect have a wait no, list? We don't have a wait list. So, so you have amongst the the five legal providers, Correct. you you don't have a wait list then. So if if they were to um, refer their wait list to Vet Connect, what would happen then? So, sir, let me just make sure that I'm clear. Um, as far as the wait list goes, right, so there's a particular service type, and it's getting assistance to apply for a service-connected disability, for example, okay. um, which is one of the main ones that we get. Our main provider that does that has a long wait list because if they're working with so many veterans, right? We can send a referral right away as long as they meet the eligibility criteria to do the referral. But the challenge is with the provider not having enough attorneys and not having enough staff to be able to take that on. Okay. So we don't have a wait list per se. Oh, because you send the wait list to them. Because we send the referral okay. to them. Yes, yeah, so you send the referral the to them and then the they have a wait list. They need and there's more veterans that are So, so how, how do we measure um, between Vet Connect and the provider that you don't keep on sending um, veterans over and only to be in a wait list and so, be for a year, two years, or three years? Who knows? So one is they tell us when they're at capacity and, and what then happens we stop then? sending referrals. But what happens then? So they have a wait list and if they have one person on the wait list, right, then they're already backed up, right? So they bounce back to you and they say, listen, we don't have any, any spots right now, so we're sending it back to you. What, do you. what does Vet Connect do then? So sir, we take care of it on the front end, right? So we're explaining to the veteran when they're reaching out to us what the provider services are and that we let them know up front that there's a wait list. If they want us to send this referral, 
that it may take some months before they're able to meet with an attorney. Now, the organization is gonna do an intake with them right away to really see if they're eligible because we just do the kind of the basics, right? right? The provider has more of the details. So we explain to them up front that for this particular service, there's normally a wait list with the organization because they have so many clients that they're trying to satisfy. So then it's up to the veteran at that point if they want us to do the referral. Most of them are okay with it because they know it's a process anyway for them to actually apply for a service-connected disability. But there are cases where we get some veterans who at that point say that they are not comfortable with going with the wait list. And those are the ones that we give to veteran services. We recommend they reach out to veteran service organizations. So, maybe so, so what do we need to do to close this loophole? I think that's a good question for, just need more resources, sir. No, okay, so that's, is this, um, is this like one of the services that you see um, the highest wait list for legal services? So uh, it's really more a question for them, sir, but uh, as sir, far as wait list. Yes. So I'm hoping to sit down. <laughs> so so that, that, again, that question is more for um, the folks that are up here and I think the city at large to discuss about resources. Our job is to make the referral. Our job is to work as an enterprise to make sure that we have the right providers in the network. But I guess what these fine folks are saying right now is that there are a lot of folks that are looking for assistance and they have scarce resources to be able to service all of them. And that does create a backlog for those clients that are looking for assistance. Okay, I have a lot more questions about uh, DBS. I'm not gonna call DBS back up here. But yes. Yeah, come on down. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. It's all right, I'm up here with old friends, so. Uh, my name is John Rowan. I'm the national president of Vietnam Veterans of America. I'm also probably the senior member of the Veterans Advisory Board of the City of New York. I'm also a former service rep who actually did work in veterans appeals process stuff for several years in the early twos. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the sergeant at arms is yelling at me here. Anyway, uh, I used to be involved at the city council too. But the bottom line is this. The New York State Division of Veterans Affairs is about the only functioning operation that does fairly substantial numbers of claims in the city of New York. And unfortunately, the State Division of Veterans Affairs pr uh, process is good, but the problem is they don't have enough people, especially in the city of New York. The VSOs, quite honestly, have very, very diminished in their capacities over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, my organization, we had a couple of people who were doing some work and it was very nice, but it was very minimal. Uh, the DA, the uh, Disabled American Veterans still has a fairly good operation. VFW has faded away over the last several years. The Legion has got some people, but they're scattered all around the country. And so while they sit in the Board of Veterans Appeals Office in Lower Manhattan, they do not have a lot of people sitting here doing that kind of work. They don't need lawyers per se, but you do need heavily trained people to be able to do appeals work. It is quasi-legal. Uh, VA is like, not surprisingly, you've got the, the worst regulations you've ever seen in your life, especially when you're dealing with all the different aspects of both mental health and physical health issues faced by veterans. So all of these folks here are doing some wonderful work, but there's such limited capacity because unfortunately, unlike the State Division of Veteran Affairs, I don't even know what their budget is today. The one fault that we've had with the City Division of Veterans Affairs, Veteran Services, excuse me, is that they haven't developed that capacity at all to provide veteran reps, veteran service reps, veteran service officers. You've got a lot of different titles, but it's basically the same thing. It's the ability to take a veteran or a family member and go through the processes involved with filing for a claim for disability. I myself, by the way, am 100% disabled basically from Agent Orange illnesses, including diabetes and ischemic heart issues. So it, t and that didn't occur right away. It took me 20 years to get to that point. Uh, so I, I really love all these people who do all this great work up here. They've been doing it for a long time, but they need support. And 
I think the city and your committee would be really good to take a look at the whole aspect of how the city and the state need to work together. What, what needs to be understood, and I've been trying to tell politicians this for years at, at all kinds of levels, believe it or not, a service rep, some person, an individual in an office working with clients in the VA to help them get benefits can probably reap anywhere from 10 to 100 times their salary on an annual basis, bringing in tax dollars into the city of New York to the tunes of millions of dollars. If you would go to the VA and ask them how many millions of dollars come into the city of New York every year to disabled veterans, you will be very, very shocked. It's an extensive number. The problem is it should be a lot more number because as was mentioned earlier with some of the folks and even the councilwoman and her husband coming back from the service, he had to face a differential. Did he get retired from the military? No. He just got put out as a disabled veteran, had to go to the VA for his disability, correct? Still struggling on that percentage. Ah, yes, see, and that's, the councilwoman can tell you what it's like to have to go through that bureaucracy. So if I, and, and I really can't fault DVS for this because they, they don't have the capacity, they've never had the capacity, and it would probably take upwards of mm, five to 10 million easily to set up a good program here in the city of New York, without a doubt, I would say, right, easily and maybe more. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what the state division spends on an annual basis in the state of New York and then parlay that down to New York City. So, I mean, uh, again, I really encourage all the work everybody's doing, but I think the city and the city council and your committee needs to look at what it takes to make an investment in the veterans in the city of New York to bring in the income that they need and that the city could use. Because I can tell you, it really isn't, it's pretty darn good when I get my, my check every month uh, as a 100% disabled veteran of a tax-free check of over $3,300 a month. I, I, I can tell you it's more than my retirement pay from the, from the city of New York, for which I retired 17 years ago. So it's a substantial amount of money. It's worth the investment. I encourage the council to take a look at that. Thank you, John. So uh, the next hearing, um we're going to be speaking about the gap of services and how we could fill that in because this is this is um, something that really I wasn't uh, wasn't even aware of that people are waiting and you have such lo uh, long waiting uh, periods for people to wait for veterans um, to get assistance. So that's the next hearing agenda. Uh, so I want to thank you for testifying, and we're going to get to uh, my friend here. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry no problem. We don't have a, uh, John, we don't have a system here, so. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chairperson Deutsch, and members of the Committee on Veterans, for this opportunity to provide testimony regarding Vet Connect NYC. My name is Joe Hunt. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, and I serve as director of the Veterans Mental Health Coalition. Uh, the coalition is administered by Vibrant Emotional Health, formerly known as the uh, New York <laughs> uh, uh, Mental Health Association. For more than 50 years, Vibrant has provided uh, direct services, public education, and advocacy to address the needs of New Yorkers living with behavioral health needs. <clears throat> In addition to administering uh, the Veterans Mental Health Coalition, Vibrant also provides training and technical assistance as well as backup call center support to the Veterans Crisis Line. Uh, the Veterans Mental Health Coalition is to, uh, goal is to improve access to and the quality of behavioral health services to, to the military-connected community, including active duty service members, veterans, their families, and caregivers. Uh, the coalition is made up of 874 individuals representing about 370 organizations, including housing, legal services, and benefits and a wide variety of other veteran serving agencies, including federal, state, city government, and educational institutions. The interesting thing is that although our name is the Veterans Mental Health Coulition, our membership is 80% 80, 80 of our members are civilian non-mental health providers seeking information about the culture and the unique needs of the military connected community in order to become more effective at delivering the services. As I've testified previously, 
a Rand Corporation's research uh, study funded by the New York State Health Foundation reported that more than half of all service members returning to civilian life in New York State return with psychological injuries or substance abuse issues, yet only one-third ever seek treatment. There are at least two primary reasons why veterans forsake their mental health. First, despite increased efforts to combat the stigma associated with mental health and uh, mental health treatment, fear about getting treatment remains considerable. Second, the need for other services are often at the top of the veteran's priority list, housing, employment, and legal services, for example. It, in our estimation, the result of these two factors is that approximately 67 of 100 veterans with a probable diagnosis of PTSD, clinical depression, or substance use are seeking services from non-mental health providers rather than connecting directly with behavioral health treatment centers. The question is, what steps can be taken to change this dynamic? One answer is to connect and share data about the number of requests and types of services that are being requested. We know that Vet Connect is a considerable uh, resource for information, referrals, and case coordination that can link New York City's military connected community who are aware of their services to service providers across a wide variety of sectors, including mental health and substance tr uh, use treatment. And I'm sure we all agree that the inclusion of more qualified providers in the Vet Connect network will enhance the benefit to the community. To that end, the Veterans Mental Health Co Coalition is working with Vet Connect and with IVMF to develop educational events for our coalition members to inform them of the benefits, qualifications, and process for becoming members of the Vet Connect community. I cannot overstate it, particularly in, in light of this discussion about capacity. I cannot overstate VetConnect's potential to provide DVS and the provider community with valuable data that will enable us to make informed decisions, develop strategies to increase the number of veterans, in my case, my interest, uh, receiving mental health and substance use treatment, and measure the effectiveness of those strategies. It would also provide us all with information about the demand, and we can look at the community to see what what additional capacity is required or what additional funding to expand these organizations might be. Um, in order to support New York City's effort to effectively serve our uh, community, it is essential to conduct communications and outreach campaigns to the community that reduce the stigma and fear associated with behavioral health and its treatment, promote conven the convenience of Vet Connect NYC to access services, train non-mental health providers in veterans' mental health first aid and encourage them to make referrals through the network and to share information with us all. We need to know the number of requests received by Vet Connect for services by type of service, especially mental health and substance use referrals, as well as identify the number of provider to provider referrals within the Vet Connect community. Vet Connect's uh, potential to inform the city's decision making is critical. With the information, with this information, we'll be able to effectively out, uh, uh, develop outreach campaigns and training curricula and measure the outcomes of our efforts. The net result of our collaborative effort will ensure that those we serve receive appropriate services and supports in order to build a, uh, productive and meaningful lives. Thank you, Chairman Deutsch and members of the Committee on Veterans. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Joe. So um, thanks for everything you do. And uh, I think the next agenda, we'll be able to hopefully get some answers to these questions and see what we need to do as a city. Um, I, I just want to thank my colleagues and, and Alika um, for, the, for, be, for being able to increase um, the Veterans Initiative in New York City Council uh, to $2.8 million that goes to many non-for-profits, and that's uh, helpful. And we're going to be having a roundtable with all the non for profits and Joe Bellow is going to be setting it up the same we did last year. And uh, I'm also looking forward to um, having a roundtable um, uh, with all the um, people involved, uh, uh, Northwell and uh, United US and, uh, and I, uh, IMVF and others who are um, instrumental in getting this, da this data to of a connect and being able to share all that information working with EVS. So working together, I think we could accomplish a lot. We need to work together. 
So stay tuned. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, we have one more panel. I'm just going to pull up. Uh, okay. Uh, John Rowan. Uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. John, wait. I could tear this out, right? Okay. Uh, Rhonda Sherwin, um, Vadim um, Ponesuk. Ponesuk. Uh, Matthew Riva and Joseph uh, Giro. We got four chairs. Hello. Hello, uh, Chairman and uh, distinguished members of the committee. Uh, on behalf of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and our more than 45,000 members, I would like to thank you for uh, the opportunity to testify here today. Uh, my name is uh, Vadim Panasuk. I'm a New Yorker, um, naturalized citizen, uh, an, an Iraq war veteran with uh, two tours in Iraq with um, 3rd Infantry Division. And I'm a master level social worker um, working as a, a senior manager of client services uh, with IVA's Rapid Response Referral Program, or RIP for short. RIP is a, a high tech, high touch uh, referral service for veterans and their families with a comprehensive and complete case management component. Uh, we assist veterans of all eras with any discharge status worldwide in confronting significant uh, challenges like unemployment, uh, financial or legal struggles, homelessness, and mental health-related issues. To date, RIP has served almost 10,000 veterans and family members nationwide and over 1,000 in New York City alone, providing critical support and resources to ensure the city's veterans' needs are effectively met. After 15 years, uh, IVA has become the preferred empowerment organization for post-9-11 veterans. Uh, while our members are spread out through the nation, uh, we are proud to say that our uh, national headquarters is located here in New York City. Uh, since its beginning, IVA has fought for and has been successful in advocating uh, for policies that are able to meet the needs of our newest generation of veterans, which includes our advocacy for the creation, proper funding, and oversight of the Department of Veteran Services, DVS. DVS has enormous potential, uh, and its establishment was a historic moment for veterans of this city. Uh, DVS can serve uh, to significantly streamline access and improve service delivery to many of the most critical uh, veteran-specific programs and resources already available here. Uh, today, we are here to report um, what we're seeing on the ground as it relates to VetConnect NYC to better inform this committee's decisions uh, as they relate to the oversight of this critical uh, program as it continues to take shape uh, and deeper integrates into the services infrastructure of our great city. To date, RIP has assisted 168 uh, VetConnect NYC clients. Um, this includes uh, NYSERV's uh, era clients as well. Uh, during the last four years at IVA, I've had the pleasure to work with many at uh, VetConnect NYC and have found them to be uh, mission-driven, very responsive, and easy to work with. Their diligence and follow-up with uh, providers to ensure services are being delivered uh, and their clients' needs are met is truly impressive. Uh, VetConnect NYC continues to stay proactive in collaborating with programs like ours by scheduling um, annual meetings between RIP uh, and VetConnect senior staff. This includes higher level decision makers uh, intending to elicit comprehensive feedback and ensure optimal collaboration. Uh, these meetings do bear fruit. Uh, for example, for the last few years, we've been experiencing challenges in seamlessly uh, receiving referrals. Uh, we're happy to report that uh, due to wide open channels of communication between our team and VetConnect NYC staff, we've been able to better integrate VetConnect NYC uh, referrals into our day-to-day -day workflow. The way their intake is structured helps us uh, to not duplicate the work already done because uh, we can clearly see what other services the veteran is receiving. However, um, other challenges persist. Uh, we view the requirement to use uh, VetConnect NYC software to participate in the network to be a barrier, limiting the number of types of programs available through VetConnect NYC. Furthermore, we do not find the in, uh, internal referral component comprehensive enough as it relates to programs and services represented there. 
the increase in the amount of digital paperwork uh, needed to sync to uh, the work of our case management case management team and Vet Connect NYC continues to be a hindrance as well. Um, another clear deficit we can see is the lack of a comprehensive case management component um, and over-reliance on programs like ours to make connections to resources not available in the VetConnect NYC network of resources. Uh, this includes various Catholic charities around the city, uh, certain housing programs, as well as programs headquartered in other states with, which deliver emergency financial assistance, employment counseling, and legal services on a national scope. Uh, thus further limiting options that Connect NYC staff have when working to meet their clients' needs. We're looking uh, to DVS uh, to adequately, adequately fund and expand that Connect NYC. We support uh, the programs that deliver critical and relevant services to veterans in need quickly and effectively. After all, um, our, own RIP, uh, uh, our own RIP team has been uh, pioneering this approach since 2012. Um, we've been doing it on a national scale with fewer resources and a smaller team. While our approach is similar, the deficiencies I have mentioned so far are stunting VetConnect, NYC's growth, deeper integration into veteran services infrastructure in New York City and nationally, and ultimately limit potential of this program. As VetConnect NYC continues to find its footing as a platform, we encourage this committee to provide them with the oversight and tools needed to be successful. Uh, we are hopeful that DVS will be uh, able to find solutions to these issues as it continues to implement various program quality enhancements. Members of this committee, uh, thank you again for the opportunity to share IVA's views uh, on these issues today. I look forward to an answering any of your questions. Thank you, Madam. So when you receive a referral from VetConnect, do you see the entire history of that referral or you only see um, what uh, the issue of that referral is? Uh, we can see where they've been referred to, what other services they're receiving, um, but also uh, this helps us identify other areas uh, where we can be more helpful and to provide additional support. So how does that work? So you get to see the whole history? No, so once you get the, um, the referral, uh, there are a number of fields and we can see what other uh, providers they're engaging with and uh, things like that. Interesting, okay. All right, thank you. Thanks for everything. Um, I don't have prepared remarks, but I'm talking. Um, my name is Rhonda Sherwin, and I appreciate the, um, <clears throat> the opportunity to speak in front of the committee. Um, I was a service provider under NYC VetConnect for three years, starting in 2016 as a veteran's financial coach. Um, the program that I was under was funded by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, administered by the Armed Forces Service Corporation. Um, I was the only veteran's financial coach and that, that um, service was exclusive to my services because I wasn't selling any products and I was just helping veterans with their personal finance issues, namely budgeting, raising credit scores, building credit, and all the challenges uh, upon transition to New York City in, um, in managing their personal finance. Um, as many of the people know in this room, that program ended in March of 2019, and therefore um, my affiliation with um, new NYC VetConnect um, ended as well. I'm not sure if any of my um, services um, have been replaced, but I know that, to quote Coco, I was the only game in town um, for three years. Um, I had some referrals from NYC. I'm going to speak from a personal experience. Um, when I started in 2016, I was given a desk and a phone and find the veterans who need financial coaching. Um, and NYC Vet Connect was handled by my predecessor who was um, at the, from the program around 2015, I think, till 2016. Through the years, um, I had some referrals from NYC Vet Connect, but most of my hundreds of clients that I saw was me really going out to the organizations to find the people. And when I asked them about NYC Vet Connect, many of them didn't know, so I considered myself a personal ambassador. For, for NYC Vet Connect. Um, but I think that um, <clears throat> the real um, problem is just the intermediary, you know, ha having it function as an intermediary. You know, veterans just want to see, like, if you need help with employment or housing, I would give them, you know, a card, a number, 
call this person, call that person, rather than me go into a portal and sign up. And I think that's why there's a low number in terms of 10% of network providers, which is, um, I didn't realize it was that low, but I'm, I'm, I was one of those. You know, I knew, I knew other people that, were, that could help the veteran. And so rather than say, well, go to a portal and sign up, you know, here's a card, here's a number, you'll get a direct call with somebody. And I think that's, um, that's the drawback as I see it. Um, the, um, you know, the way veterans really want to talk to somebody, they want to call somebody and have a direct contact, and that's what I was doing, you know, the one-to-one -one coaching rather than give, you know, um, you know, referrals and, um, you know, other people, <clears throat> you know, other websites and other, you know, organizations. They really wanted names of people to talk to. So overall, you know, the people at uh, NYC Vet Connect were terrific, and I know a lot of people, I'm, I'm echoing that, um, you know, that voice as well. Very easy to work with, good follow-up, um, but I couldn't rely on just those referrals to keep my practice going. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairman Deutsch, uh, members of the council. Uh, thank you for taking the time to hear these testimonies today. My name is Matthew Reba. I'm a Marine Corps combat veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan who served six tours over the course of 10 years. I'm currently the Outreach and Education Director for New York Presbyterian's Military Family Wellness Center. As you know, most recent data collected from community surveys in the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs states that there are roughly 220,000 military veterans living in the five boroughs of New York. Recent studies have also shown that of those veterans, 15 to 30 percent carry a diagnosis of PTSD or major depressive disorder. And although publicly available treatment options, such as the Veterans Administration Healthcare Network, provide invaluable resources to this community, about 50 percent of veterans refuse or don't qualify for VA services, while their family members are usually excluded from accessing these services altogether. Our clinic at New York Presbyterian was established in 2016 at Columbia University Medical Center in Weill Cornell Medicine and seeks to bridge this treatment divide by providing cost-free evidence-based assessment and treatment to local area veterans, active duty service members, and adult family members. Since our inception, the Military Family Wellness Center has prioritized collaboration with regional, public, and private institutions, seeking to complement existing resources rather than to compete and try to replace them. One important community collaborator in our mission to provide these mental health resources to the veteran and military families of New York has been VetConnect New York, uh, formerly NYSERVs. Over the last three years, our center has served hundreds of New York City veterans conducting 379 phone screens, 294 mental health intake assessments, and enrolling 244 veterans and military family members into our patient care. The primary conditions that we treat are PTSD, major depression, anxiety disorders, as well as adjustment disorders. Both of our clinical sites, Columbia Research Center and Weill Cornell's Program for Anxiety and Traumatic Stress are in-network providers on VetConnect New York. Uh, since our clinics have been registered as providers, and this is going back to 2016, including the previous New York serves, we've had close to 50 patient referrals from VetConnect New York City and 30 of cases of which we were able to accept for assessment or treatment. Although this number may not seem high, it makes up roughly 10% of our total load. Uh, and mental health is uh, just one of the many categories of resources available on VetConnect NYC and one that is not very often sought after by comparison of some of the other categories of service. That being said, we at the Military Family Wellness Center feel that it's important to highlight that both of our clinics along with many of the other service providers listed on VetConnect NYC are nonprofit organizations, many who struggle to find funding in order to continue serving the veterans community of New York. While VetConnect NYC serves, as an important serves an important purpose of connecting veterans to resources that they need, it's the nonprofit organizations providing veteran services that are equally in need of support in order to be able to continue to offer these resources. The challenges facing military families are enormous, and although the VA continues to provide most of the care, thousands of individuals seeking service-related mental health treatment in the New York region do not receive it. The Military Family Wellness Center has established a record of excellence in addressing these gaps in service, and through focus on easy access, privacy, and high-quality care, we've become a recognized and valued resource for local military family community. With the help of local government leaders and community collaborators like VetConnect NYC, we hope to expand our scope of service and provide vital treatment to this highly valued but very underserved population. Mm -hmm. Council members, thank you for your time. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Matthew.
Good morning or afternoon. I haven't checked my watch in a while to know exactly where we're at. Um, but uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Deutsch, and also the committee members. I'd also like to thank you for your dedication to veterans and their families. So I'm a psychologist and uh, currently work at the VA's Vision 2 uh, Mental Illness Research, Education, and Clinical Center out of the James J. Peters uh, Veteran Affairs uh, Medical Center uh, in the Bronx with a focus on suicide prevention. I'm currently being onboarded as a Director of Education and Clinical Practice for Vision 2 region uh, consisting of New York and, uh, and also New Jersey. Uh, so I'm the principal investigator for two uh, VA national programs. One is a uh, veteran cultural competence training in which we train non-veteran providers, college faculty and staff, and community leaders across the nation to better serve veterans uh, and their families. And the other program that uh, I help to lead is a sponsorship program for veterans. Uh, so at, at my core, I am an infantryman um, and also a disabled veteran. I graduated from West Point in 1998 and spent 20 years in the infantry of four deployments to Afghanistan before retiring last year. Uh, my first deployment was within, uh, within months of 9-11 with the 2nd Ranger Battalion in Afghanistan. Um, during that deployment and others to follow, New York City stood out as a beacon of resilience and hope to me uh, and also other service members in the entire nation. Uh, as a result of 19 years of war and many other stressors, there have been many significant and negative impacts upon my fellow comrades and also uh, myself. My most difficult deployment to, uh, was in 2006 after I had soldiers under my command and also my best friend was killed. Uh, I was back here in New York City uh, after the deployment studying at Columbia University before going back to West Point to be an assistant professor. Uh, I felt alone in a city and didn't know where to turn for services. And one of the most anxiety provoking times of my life was uh, waiting in that waiting room um, because I was all alone and I didn't feel prepared for the emotional strain that, uh, was, that was awaiting me. And for the first time, I, I didn't feel competent and I felt alone and isolated. Uh, and uh, very thankfully, you know, my services there at that VA vet center um, saved my life and also put me on this current path and trajectory that I'm on uh, right now. So, but many service members are very reluctant to seek needed uh, mental health care, and this contributes to the highest rate of suicide among our youngest veterans, with the rate of suicide among 18 to 34 year olds doubling from 2006 to the current rate. The rates are even higher for those who don't seek the services that we're talking about today. It, it's an epidemic, I and mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, and, it and it's the greatest significant rise in suicide that, uh, that, we've, that we really have ever seen uh, at, at the VA. Um, and this troubling trend led to the President issue an executive order on March 5, 2019, just a couple short months ago, that called for federal agencies to work closer with local governments, academia, private, nonprofit entities. Um, to, uh, to assist the transition of service members. There also was another executive order last year uh, focused on suicide prevention and that key critical one year after transition. So that's when this youngest population is the most vulnerable, unfortunately. Um, and it's very serendipitous that DVS and Syracuse University, IVMF, have already been conducting extensive work in this field. Uh, this, the sponsorship program that I lead uh, regarding program evaluation and training across the nation for the, for the VA helps to ease the transition for service members by recreating a program that they're very familiar with within the military, and that's the Permanent Changes Station um, sponsorship program when they go from one military, military installation to another. And my last job in the military was as an infantry battalion commander where I managed our own PCS sponsorship program. And we saw the program as easing their transitioning by helping them to uh, access necessary programs and receive one-on-one -on -one support at their new installation. But unfortunately, when service members uh, execute an expiration term of service, retire, there aren't similar individuals assigned as being responsible for their transition into their hometowns with service members also losing their benefits of military leadership, camaraderie, support, and structure. Uh, these losses can cause transitioning service members to experience increased transition stress, a de decrease in sense of purpose, and elevated risk for suicide and other mental health concerns in the civilian community. So that's why myself and also uh, those of us in the MIREC collaborate very closely with entities within the Department of Defense, Syracuse University's IVMF, DVS, and uh, nonprofits, most specifically American Corporate Partners, and Provetus to expand the uh, concept of this ETS sponsorship with uh, VetConnect NYC. Um, so I wholeheartedly believe that this vet that Connect NYC almost is like that new unit that the service members are transitioning to that is so much, uh, so much needed. 
And I feel that working with the ETS sponsor and VetConnect, we hypothesize that they'll be able to overcome stigma and access uh, to the needed care that they need. Uh, it's been very important to the program that the VA services uh, are listed as vetted network providers, such as the vet centers that I've sought care at, because uh, I don't want any other service members to experience the hardship and isolation I did after my uh, la one of my last deployments in 2006. So the initial work in New York City with VetConnect NYC has become a beacon of resilience and hope for other cities regarding a potential way to mitigate the suicide risks that our youngest veterans face. And I look forward to continued work with IVMF, DVS, and the VetConnect NYC team to help even more transitioning service members. And uh, as a veteran and uh, VA employee, I'm more than willing to, uh, to help in whatever way this committee can be of service. Um, and if you're interested, I also uh, gave you a paper that we wrote, a scholarly journal paper, uh, that's recently uh, accepted, going to be published in Military Journal, a special edition, edition on transitioning service members that talks about the role and the importance of DVS, the importance of VetConnect NYC, and the theoretical and academic independent to kind of justify what we're talking about today. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, doctor. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I admire the work that you, that you do on behalf of uh, our veterans. Um, and I'm also trying to like sometimes figure out, you know, um, we have here in the United States of America, we have like 20 veteran suicides each day. So I'm trying to figure out the numbers of the veteran suicides here in New York City. Uh, and we're trying to get those reports. But I also, I um, submitted the bill to the New York City Council that if there is a veteran suicide here in New York City, it must be reported yeah. Um, so this way we have those numbers without trying to scramble to figure out how many there are, because we need to see um, the scope of that. This way we could, we could better address, um, you know, veterans who have PTSD, depression, or a any other type of mental health um, issue. So this is extremely important. And by, not, by knowing the suicide rate, we could better grab, uh, um, have a handle on on what resources we need to continue putting in. So I want to thank you uh, and on, uh, for the work that you do, and I'm looking forward to working very closely with you. Yes, sir. Uh, so thank you. Um, any questions, my colleague? No? OK. So uh, with that said, um, the meeting, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. I know you have other things to do, but this is an important issue. So I really want to thank everyone, the advocates, um, uh, everyone who testified. I also want to thank the press. I'm sure there's other stuff that you need to report on. Uh, so I want to thank the press for being here today and for reporting on veteran issues here in New York City. So with that, um, the meeting is now adjourned.